Today is Monday, March 26, 2018, and my name is Scott Henshaw. I am in the UNCG Alumni House with current international student Anastasia Timkino to conduct an oral history interview for the UNCG Institutional Memory Collection. Good morning. Good morning. So I'd like to start the interview by asking you about your background. Can you tell me when and where you were born? Um, I was born on June 16, 1994, um, in a small town in Russia on the northwest. Um, my hometown is called Arkhangelsk. Um, sort of kind of like a loose pronunciation in English. Uh, but it's a relatively small town, um, bigger than Greensboro, but not as big as St. Petersburg, for example, where I moved later. Okay. Oh. And how long were you there before you moved to St. Petersburg? For uh, 17 years. Oh, wow. Tell me about your family and home life. What did your parents do? Okay. So my mom got her education as an economist, um, but right now she, um, her main occupation is a landlord. Mm -hmm. uh, my family owns um, a couple of apartments in St. Petersburg and, you know, she lends them to people. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, my dad is a physicist, but now he's mainly um, involved in construction. So that was his education in physics, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then he just started doing... Um, different types of businesses until he came to construction. Okay, cool. And can you tell me about your education before college? Um, I just had, you know, normal, usual education. Um, I had primary school, middle school, high school. We don't exactly call them like that, uh -huh. but um, the only difference I had is that I didn't have the fourth grade. Because mm -hmm. for uh, people who were born in 1993 and 1994, uh, my country had like a special program uh -huh. where we could finish the first like four years in three years okay. and then uh, go straight to middle school from that. Well, that's cool. So I finished school when I was still um, 16 and somewhere I got uh, 17 and then I moved uh, to St. Petersburg for a college. Okay, that's interesting. So, uh, was that for all children, or you had to? Did they have like standardized tests like we have in school? No, okay. for everybody. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So if um, they might like some schools might not have this option. I I don't know about mm -hmm. that, but in my school that was the only one. And if you were you know enrolled in school um, at that year. It's just what was for you. Okay, that's cool. And so what were your favorite subjects? Mm. If you had any. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I, I, I liked English in school, but that was also kind of like a love-hate relationship. Because mm -hmm. um, at some point, I just got really good at English, mm -hmm. so to be in a class <laughs> seemed really pointless to me, <laughs> so it was like a major waste of time. Why am I here? Oh, wow. I speak better than you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so... so um, it, it, did it come fairly easy to you, or...? Yeah, you the speaking natural, part. Yeah, okay. The, the grammar part was not easy, um, but I didn't really care about that that much, because, um, I don't know, everyone else, you know, and... Um, like when I uh, discovered the internet for mm -hmm. myself and you know started traveling uh, with my family I just noticed that people speak with different types of mistakes mm -hmm. and also yes. if I speak some of the like you know tenses and prepositions just come naturally mm -hmm. you know kind of like um, intuition right yeah, sort exactly. of thing yeah so was English an elective for you in your schools, or was it something everybody took? Everybody took English. Oh, okay. um, some people, because of like different schools, and you know, it depended on which teacher they had. So some people had German from okay. the very beginning. But everybody took a, s a second language, basically. Yes. And a lot of them were English. Yeah. That's cool. 
Okay. Now, you already had a bachelor's degree when you got here, right? Mm -hmm. You have one from, can you tell me about your school and what your degree was? Um, so I got my degree in library and information science. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I got into uh, this program mainly because I had some health issues and I did not care that much where I will go. Mm -hmm. um, so in Russia, basically, you there are like open days in the universities during um, May and June where you can go in, you can apply right at that place, um, you can talk to uh, student, current students at this university. And when I got to my um, arts and culture uh, university, um, some girl came up to me and said, oh my god, you had so, such an amazing grades, you know, you should go to library and information science. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, sure, okay, I'll apply. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, so I did, and then later in um, summer I broke my knee, mm. I ripped the meniscus, so I had to stay at a hospital for a very long time, and the other um, other departments that I applied to, they required like extra exams, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do them. Um, so once I found out that I'm accepted at this university, you know, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll grow to love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you, do you have anything else to say about your university that you went to there mm? in Russia? The university you went to in Russia, that school. What was the name of what was its name? The University of Culture and Arts. Okay. St. Petersburg University okay. of Culture and Arts. Okay. Yeah. Great. When did you first visit the U.S.? Um, I think it was 2015. Um, it was for a week, I think, in February or March with my sister. Um, my sister already traveled before then because mm -hmm. uh, my dad moved here way before I did um, and so we decided to go and see him and um, we first went to New York then um, we went to Washington and then we spent like five days in Miami so sort of like a mini tour mm -hmm. I guess sure yeah, um, yeah you've seen some places I haven't seen so. <laughs> And yeah. what was that first experience like, uh, you know, compare, especially compared to your expectations of what America was like? Now, obviously, your mm -hmm. dad had already been here, so maybe you heard some things from him. But right. uh, how did expectations match up with reality? Mm -hmm. um, I honestly thought that I would be more in shock uh -huh. if, you know, when I land in America, mm -hmm. you know, because, I mean, you know, it's a different continent. You know, it's like way, you know, far from home. Yeah. And, um, but when we landed, I was like, yeah, okay. Fit this in is right, it. right off the bat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> 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 Which was, I mean, I realized that it was weird. But then, at, you know, in some ways, it just felt so similar. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, Maybe it's because it was a big city, mm -hmm. you know, and I already got used to big cities by that point. And it's just, you know, same buildings, same roads, same cars. So, yeah, um, I mean, it was definitely fun. Mm -hmm. We had um, we had a very annoying tour guide, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, he in New York is this New York? Yes, okay. in New York. Um, and Washington, I think. He was really excited about American history. Okay. And I I was just like, I just landed here. <laughs> Got me some slack. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. So, and my sister was the same. So right. we were mostly just, you know, like staring out the windows, not really listening mm -hmm. or, you know, texting someone. Was you he know. telling you stuff you already knew? Or was it just no. not, you were just not interested at that point tired from the flight okay yeah gotcha it, it just was like really heavy historical stuff right so i mean okay 
Was there anything that surprised you about America? Mm. <laughs> um, I guess the realization how America is just similar to Russia, you know, because um, you would think that through the whole like relationship, oh, you know, we must be so different, like mm -hmm. the polar opposites, when in reality, it's not, you know, mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, people are the same everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, when did you first consider coming to the U.S. to further your education? I think once I graduated from my first university, mm -hmm. the summer started and I realized that I don't really want to work as a librarian. Right. So, um, I just, I was thinking of other options mm -hmm. and I thought, well, I always wanted to study abroad. My dad is in America right now. Maybe I can apply to an American university, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I had to go through the program first, um, the like uh, university foundation program okay. where they uh, prepare you for TOEFL, just a test mm -hmm. of English language, and uh, SATs and mm -hmm. all that. So, oh, yeah. you did this in Russia, the no, or? I um, so there is a company called English First, okay. and it operates all around the world. And um, we had I had you know its office like right almost next to my house, and so um, I went there for some English courses before for TOEFL uh, because I, w I just wanted to know the actual level of my English. Mm -hmm. um, and I checked online and they had these courses and that sounded, you know, really promising. Like, oh, you will definitely get into the university. Uh -huh. So I applied and they're sending people to America. Okay. Like you can of course stay uh, where you are, but it's just going to be a little bit harder and without the whole immersion mm -hmm. part. Sure. So um, there were, they have like different types of courses, but I chose this university foundation and one of them was in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go there. As it's, I don't know, I just thought it would be um, more pleasant weather wise than <laughs> Seattle. Yeah. If you like, if you like warmth. Yeah. You f how did you find Atlanta? That's a, it's another big city, but it's a city in the south as opposed to like New York. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know if you've spent enough time around it to to <laughs> notice differences. Um, well, we were not, you know, in the city specifically. Okay. We were a little bit further away on campus of Oglethorpe University. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't say much about the city itself. What I can say is that Marta is awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, the people were friendly, mm -hmm. which was kind of like weird at first, so but. As opposed to New York, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. That's what I thought and you meant. as opposed to Russia. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause but again, is that a big city thing? Probably not. Mm, I think it's a north-south thing, Okay. actually. Well, right now I think so. Because <laughs> when I complain about people being too friendly uh -huh. with me everywhere to my friends, they're like, yeah, you should go to New York. <laughs> 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 so how did you find out about USCG? Um, I was, I wanted to become an archeologist because mm -hmm. I thought, well, if I'm already here, I might as well just fulfill this dream of mine. Okay, so you know. this is something you thought about when you were younger too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everybody at least once wanted to be, you know, Indiana Jones or mm -hmm. Lara Croft. And um, we, you know, me and my family, we traveled a lot. So, you know, we saw the pyramids, we saw the Parthenon, we saw all these cool things. And, y you know, you can't stay the same once you do that right. so um, and my mom always wanted to be an archaeologist okay. I, yeah. I don't know I mean I guess you know she had her reasons for the specific education that she got um, 
And then uh, there might be more jobs in being an economist than an archaeologist. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yes, especially at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, she always told me that my grandfather wanted to be a historian like all his life, but never actually fulfilled this dream. So mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is now, <laughs> you know, yeah. my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I was looking into archaeology programs okay. mainly. And at first I did what probably any other student does, just apply to like the best colleges ever. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, like Brown or Boston or <laughs> something like this. Right. And um, of course I got a no. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, probably because I didn't, you know, like they probably wanted, you know, like better grades or more activity or better writing. I don't know. Yeah. And then I realized that, well, there are other schools, you know. Um, so I created a new list for me of perfectly great schools with, you know, great archaeology programs, just not as, you know, high up. Right. Right. And um, UNCG was one of them. Um, and they really, you know, liked the program itself. I wasn't really looking into anything else much and then also as a nice addition one of my friends from Atlanta said that she was going to the school too okay. and she's actually here awesome. too yeah I'm still here yeah great and what is what program is she in is she in a similar program or? I think uh, <laughs> she's doing African-American studies and um, film oh, cool. I think she also nice started yeah a third major but I don't remember perhaps French okay yeah makes sense yeah that's cool okay so did you know anything about UNCG before you got here other than the program yeah no, you I just need to have some archaeology programs yeah and we have a few few different versions of that really right we have classical archaeology and yeah. interdisciplinary uh, program yeah and at first I actually applied for classical archaeology too as like a second major um, I think uh, or maybe I, you know, applied for it once I already got here. Um, but I always thought that, you know, um, you choose the university for the program yeah. and not for any other things like where it is or, right. you know, who goes there. Yeah. Is it a party school or not? Yeah. Okay. So what was your first impression of UNCG? Was it what you expected? Um, my oh. first impression was that it's really green. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's Greensboro <laughs> 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 and hot, uh, yeah. And came in the summer, I guess. Yes, yeah. um, I came with my dad. Um, he helped me, you know, move in, um, and we both were like, "Huh, okay, this is really, you know, nice and beautiful and hot." <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't expect it to be this vast you know, mm -hmm. so the campus itself. Right, so you hadn't had a, a, a real thorough tour of campus before you got no. here. Interesting. No. Yeah. And I, again, I wasn't really interested in that. Sure. Um, well, that's, f that's sort of a normal thing, at least for students who are in the U.S. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they'll bring uh, prospective students in on a campus tour because they're trying to decide, like you were, which school do I want to go to, what offers yeah. me. And that's one of the ways that they try to say, well, hey, we got this great campus and all schools do that. Mm -hmm. know, every school has a great campus. So, yeah. so that's just one of the things mm -hmm. they usually do. No, no, I, I, I uh, see people sometimes yes. on these tours. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, it, it might be too uh, like snobby of me, but I always think like, why bother? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> well, no, you're right. I mean, you, you're absolutely right. You should pick a school on based on the academic merits of the mm -hmm. particular field yeah so what was your freshman year like um and of course we should mention again this was like your second freshman year because you already had yeah. a degree but uh, maybe you can i don't know if there were any differences in the schools but well it was definitely different okay um because well first thing i never actually lived on campus before okay um our universities back at home don't have campuses like this they do have dorms but usually dorms are on the other side of the city okay <laughs> so 
uh, which is really counterintuitive, I think. But um, it is what it is. Um, so, so students just have to take public transportation yes, usually? Yes, and okay. a lot. Um, probably because the universities, you know, are in those like historical right. buildings that, you know, were maybe, you know, palaces before or, you know, something right. like this. They're not built for the purpose. Yeah. Right. So, and there are no actual, you know, places for students to live around. Um, it, it was definitely hard in the beginning because um, I always had troubles communicating with people, you know. So just um, being around a bunch of people I've n absolutely, you know, never met before mm -hmm. was kind of like uh, scary. Yeah, <laughs> and definitely. also, yeah, cause, um, because I don't need, I didn't need, you know, all the like gen ed classes and all that. I got into like several classes that were kind of like 300 level, okay. like f from the get go. From the start, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's not that the classes were hard, it's just that the people in the classes were more experienced, you mm -hmm. know, in the field of archaeology than me. Right. So I was, at first, I was a little bit discouraged by those people. But then I became friends with them. So. Yeah. It's all okay. Right. So you got some credit for your work you did in Russia yeah. in your first degree. That's really good. Yeah. So tell me about your major. So uh, my major right now, I'm double majoring in archaeology and anthropology with okay. a minor in classical studies. And I love it. <laughs> I think it's a really nice combination yes. that you get from it. And do you have any favorite classes or favorite professors? Favorite professors, definitely. Um, well, first is Professor Linda Stein, <laughs> Dr. Linda Stein. Um, I am currently starting to work with her a little bit, um, helping her with her class. And she is just, you know, such a supportive professor. Um, Especially, you know, if you're a girl, and sometimes that's, you know, really hard to find. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and, I mean, it's just like the fact that, you know, she had this job opportunity, you know, and she, she even said in front of the class, like, this is Anna. She's a good archaeologist. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? Makes you feel good, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, she's, nice. she's extremely nice and kind. And, um... There's also um, Dr. Susan Andreata. Mm -hmm. um, I, um, I came to her when I was um, having like a really hard time, just like personally and mentally and with my classes. And um, for some reason, I thought that, well, I think she likes me maybe she will listen to me because mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone else who would at that point and she actually you know was you know um, she really did her best to you know just listen to me and comfort me and try to come up with the solutions she said well you definitely need friends come to the garden club mm -hmm. so which was actually a really nice you know, change to uh -huh. just like do something else that. Um, is this a s student group or is this a community group? The Garden Club. Yeah, this the student group. Okay. Yeah, cool. so uh, we haven't gardened actually yet because uh -huh. it's been pretty cold, but we've been you know indoors, and I I've definitely met new people and they're all really friendly, so it's nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then in um, classics department, there's, there's Dr. Joanne Murphy. Mm -hmm. And I went with her to Greece this summer. Yeah. I, so I liked her from like the very first class I had with her. It was Greek archaeology. Yeah. And I think she said something like, if you're not willing to work hard, 
don't take this class. <laughs> <laughs> Sets you up in the, in the beginning, right? Yeah. You know what you're going to get. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, she's kind of like the type of professor I really like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the um, kind of strict type that, you know, wants you to, you know, really work hard, but then also can, you know, sometimes joke around and, you know, um, but also can, like, talk to you um, honestly right? without like sugarcoating stuff mm -hmm. so some people don't like it because I don't know I don't know maybe they have different standards but for me it was sure. like I don't know she won my heart right away <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah, yeah any, any other professors or classes that you particularly like um I think those are like my major three. Sure. And what what is this you're working with uh, Dr. Stan on? Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about the project? Um, she is um, teaching the methods in archaeology class right now, mm -hmm. and um, I'm there kind of like a TA. Okay. Um, so basically, I'm there in the beginning of their labs to help her set the lab, and then I'm also there for like two hours a day. It's like really, you know, short job. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool. Uh, to just like help students yeah. if they want some, you know. Tutoring or yeah, extra. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Awesome. So how easy is it for a foreign student to fit in at UNCG? Or do you even see yourself that way? <laughs> well, I am. I'm, I'm definitely a foreign student. Okay. And I don't know, maybe people are tired already of me reminding everyone that, hey, I'm Russian, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> um, but I think it's like a very large part of my identity mm -hmm. and, you know, explains a lot of um, stuff about me and like the behavior and what I say and everything. So I want to warn people. Right. <laughs> um, uh, fitting in... Um, can be hard um, in you know some ways um, I mean I th for the most part Americans are very you know welcoming to international students because you know the whole you know country of immigrants and all that thing mm -hmm. so I mean you know what's the difference some people immigrated back in the past I mean people are immigrating now right but at the same time you need some patience because people are going to laugh at your accent probably mm -hmm. and they're going to correct you a lot or pretend that they didn't hear you right mm -hmm. like uh, a lot of people have topped me when I spoke about something uh, on the word modern mm -hmm. I would pronounce it as modern mm -hmm. with an O because there's an O right. and then it would be like no 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 wait did you mean Modern? <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's pretty picky. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes it gets to like those little things, but um, then overall, you might become a stereotype. That's mm. another thing. Right. Um, so it's just that people are gonna, you know, see different, you know, stuff in you and associate what they already know with you. Mm. For a lot of my friends or just acquaintances I am always the Russian Anna in their phone books <laughs> or something like that you've seen that right yes you, come and people online. have people have told me wow. you know like you're the Russian Anna <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting yeah and that's you know that's all fine um, until people start calling me a communist mm -hmm. and like to me it's not necessarily an insult right away you know because well, yeah, we had that history. So what? Right. But then it is really an insult in America. So. Right. Yeah. Uh, are you involved with any other international students on campus? I know you talked about one of your friends who yeah. came with you, um, or any international student organizations here? Um, not with the organizations. Okay. I mean, but you do know other international students? Yeah, some yeah. of them. Uh, I mean, my friend Siorta, who I came with, we kept in touch for like really the cool. full year, you know. And I think uh, we didn't have the goal of like trying to fit in here 
through the international group. Right. So we kind of like separated ourselves from them and just started, you know, making friends among, you know, sure. the local people. Right. So. So, did, but does UNCG have anything uh, suppo extra support for foreign students, or do you know of anything in programs or anything? Yeah, like that? they do. Okay. I think the International Center does a lot of these things, and they have like um, different events mm -hmm. that um, you know. Some of them are actually like international, like you can represent your country and all that. So, I think that is cool if you're interested in that. Yeah. So is there any work or project or research you've done while you were at UNCG of which you're particularly proud? Mm -hmm. Research. Well, I mean, um, I haven't started with the research yet, but um, I do want to. I'm just, you know, trying to figure out how to get involved mm -hmm. in everything like that. Yeah. But um, I'm, you know, trying to volunteer here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, the big thing, uh, not a project, but this trip to Greece with Joanne Murphy um, it was for six weeks. Mm -hmm. And like the first week was, um, you know, tour around Greece. And mm -hmm. then we worked in the lab for five weeks. And it was like, you know, um, the great archaeological experience. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. So you did lab work, you didn't do a dig then, right? No, because it was a survey mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Right. No one was digging anything. Right. Yeah. But a lot of people, you, you know, you talked about growing up in Indiana Jones and Larkoff. A lot of people, of course, that's those are odd um, sort of views of archaeology anyway, right? It's not the real thing. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people, even if they have a closer view of it, they mm -hmm. tend to think of digging, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is fun too, in some way. But of course, that's only a small part of the job, right? Most of the job is in the lab. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people. Like I think each one of my family members asked me at least once, or even twice sometimes. Like, okay, have you dug up something? Yeah, right. <laughs> What's the latest no. discovery? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, but yeah. you you knew it ahead of time, so that was good. I think um, there was actually, um, a f well, I mean, I consider it the funny moment uh -huh. um, when I think it was week four of lab work uh, by then, and um, Joanne came up to me asking, like, "How are you? You know, how are you doing?" I think I was just like, you know, bagging something, making a list, crossing things off the list, right, and. Um, I asked her, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing it fine, but when are we going to dig? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, she called she me a cheeky bastard, but right. <laughs> <laughs> So you talked about the uh, garden club. Are there any, um, are you involved in any ex extracurricular activities or clubs other than that? Yes, there is um, an archaeology club that's starting to, you know, do something. It's it's really new, sure. so um, we're still you know planning like what are we gonna do all together. Uh, there is the classical society, which I am now the vice president of. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. Um, and we're also um, organizing the um, undergraduate classical symposium nice. for like the fall. So that's. Um, that has been kind of like a big stress for me because yeah, I had to like, big deal. yeah, email all the different schools. So, you, different schools. So you're getting people from other schools. Yes. To come? Wow. Cool. Um, and there's also a Russian club. It's on hiatus right now. Okay. Because our uh, president left to study abroad in okay. Kazan, but as soon as he gets back, <laughs> we'll start to do something new. Wow. So are you the only Russian? In the Russian club, or are there yeah, yeah, okay. I'm kind of like a mascot. So, yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> I was, that's what I was getting to. Are you the uh, representative for the? Yeah. Whole, okay. Yeah. yeah, I have. I think I have scared some people away <laughs> from the club. Actually, oh, no. yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I should like really watch what I say sometimes. <laughs> You know, well, you're just the test of whether they're really interested in being in the club right. or not. And right, and some people have told me, well, you know, like I expected Russian people to be offensive, so I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Okay, 
<laughs> did they approach you or did you say, oh, cool, Russian club, maybe I should go in and join this? Uh, yeah, I was, okay, so my first semester I decided to try fencing. Oh, okay, And cool. um, when I think I just started saying something, like introducing myself, like, hi, I'm Anna, you know, doing this and that. Um, the guy later came in, came to me, and he was like, "Ты русская? Are you Russian?" Uh -huh. And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> uh, he said that with without any accent completely. So my first assumption was that he's also Russian. Yeah. That was actually Nick, um, one member of the club. He's just really good at Russian. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So and that's how I got into the club. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so outreach, that's good. Mm. Uh, are there any social or academic events that stand out in your mind during your time at USCG? <laughs> um, well, I think the Classics Day. Okay, yeah. That's a big thing. Um, and tell me what that is, so people will know. Um, so it's the, it's the event organized by the Classical Society. All the things related to the ancient world mostly Greek and Roman, of mm -hmm. course. Um, but we have theater performances, Greek and Roman. We have board games. We have fortune tellers. We have all the, um, I think we also have gladi gladiator fights. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, all the cool and interesting things yeah. and people can, you know, just come and participate. Yeah. We also have a lot of children coming from, you know, schools. Oh, so, yeah, it's always Is fun. it during the week or on the weekend? Or it's on the weekend, okay. usually, yeah. Okay, that's cool. So, can you tell me about your fellow students? Uh, I'm interested in what type of student attends UNCG, mm. if you have any yeah. sense of that. Um, well, I'm, most of my friends are sort of like me, mm -hmm. you know, um, people who are kind of a perfectionist, okay. you know, and they're, you know, constantly stressing about their GPA, <laughs> constantly stressing about the next project and taking too much, you know. Sure. Um, so I'm mostly surrounded by those people. I have more like easygoing uh, friends. Um, that you know don't worry as much um, that is also you know <laughs> I guess a type yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes I'm getting frustrated with them because like okay you're saying you want better grades but then you're also spending at the old town all your weekends <laughs> 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 yeah well, but some I people mean. can do that and some people can't yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess we're all kind of, um, how to say, obsessing over classes, mm -hmm. at least, you know, from my social group, mm -hmm. but I guess that what connects us. Okay. Well, that's a good thing to do in school. It's okay. So, you, we've, you know, we talked about your bachelor's degree from Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about any differences between getting a bachelor's in Russia and getting mm -hmm. a bachelor's here? Yeah. Um, I know you said there are some similarities too, so, mm -hmm. but are there any differences? Uh, there are definitely. Um, the whole semester is separated into two parts. The first two months you attend lectures. They're in big um, auditoriums and it's basically when a professor is just speaking at you. There is no other interaction going on. Right. Um, I mean, of course, I'm saying just from my personal experience, well, maybe course. you know, other universities differently. Um, so you come in, you take notes, you leave. Um, and then the second uh, part, another like two months or a month and a half, are Mm. seminars uh, when you now prepare for you know the class mm -hmm. uh, you either have a topic or some discussion to prepare to 
or you may have a small paper. Excuse me. Um, so you write the paper and you present it, you know, in front of the class, or you write a review. And again, so it's basically you standing in front of the class and then another student, and you're, the the idea is that you're now supposed to be teaching yourselves. Mm -hmm. The professor still, you know, lead the classes. It just happens less often. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and um, those seminars, they are in, you know, uh, you are separated into like smaller groups. Mm -hmm. Based on your uh, specialization, starting from the second year, because in the department you have kind of like different tracks. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, my track was children's literature. Um, another thing is that you cannot choose your classes. Uh, those are already, hmm. you know, chosen for you. You just apply for the program. Okay. Um, so, yeah. okay. so once, you know, after the second year, once the seminar started, I was in a group of people who were also interested in children's literature. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, and um, by the end of um, each year, you write um, a big paper on some topic. Um, and by the end of the fourth year, you write your final paper that is like um, 100 pages long mm -hmm. uh, paper, which you have to um, kind of like present, but also like support your points okay. and so your arguments. So it's like argument. a thesis and you have to defend, defend it. Yes, okay. exactly. Okay. So, and you are standing in front of your faculty and, okay. yeah. That's pretty intimidating as an yes. undergraduate. Yes, really stressful. Because we usually don't have to do that kind of thing at that level. That's yeah. for sure. Also, um, our exams are mostly oral. Okay. So there are no, yeah. like, multiple choice <laughs> things. You just, um, they give you a set of questions, um, like a week before the exam. You prepare for them, you write them out, so you plan what you're going to say, you memorize it, and then when you come to the exam, there's um, a bunch of, you know, like papers. Uh, each paper uh, on the table of the professor. Each paper has two random questions that you were supposed to prepare for. You take it, you go take a seat, you prepare what you're going to say, and then you go to the professor and you say mm -hmm. everything that you know about this. Is, this is very much like my master's degree in uh. education. So you, you had the questions. Well, they gave you a range. You were supposed to be responsible to know about mm -hmm. all of these right. works, all of this body of literature, and then they could pick what mm -hmm. they wanted to ask you about. But you, you, know, you had your committee. That you, you pick your committee and uh, then, the, of course, it's a written test. Uh, for that, for history, other mm -hmm. disciplines might be different, uh, but yeah, it's very much the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have an idea of what they're going to ask you about. I mean, they want you to succeed, you know, obviously, um, but you still do have to be prepared to ask on any range within your discipline. Yeah, it's very similar. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so the only thing that comes to my mind about that is class size. Like, if we tried to do that as undergraduates here. I have no idea how long that would take forever. I mean, right. it would it'd be impossible just mm -hmm. because of the numbers of students. Are the mm -hmm. classes smaller in general, or? Um, so they separate us in groups, mm -hmm. you know, based on those tracks. So, for example, we had a hundred of people coming to, you know, this specific department, and then we're in three groups, mm -hmm. and they have different days for different groups. Okay. So it's kind of like spread out. I mean, but also. Um, I, they have, you know, multiple professors for, like, for example, the same class, but for different departments. So, um, and, yeah, so it's, they, they handle it somehow. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, it. It's very interesting, though. We hadn't talked about that before. Uh, so, how do you maintain contact and relationships with your family and friends, I assume you still have in Russia? Yeah, um, well, I talk to them on the phone, mm -hmm. mainly. Um, with, um, I call my mom like every other day or once in three days, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I text my sister some like 
memes or <laughs> sure. funny pictures. Your sister's older than you, right? Yes. Is she... Oh, no, uh, she's younger than me. Younger than you. Uh, she's eight years younger than me, so okay. she's 15 right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. So she is still in Russia. Yes. Okay. She have, in talking to you, has she had an interest to come here and go to school as well? Yes. Or? Okay. She also wants to be an archaeologist. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's going to carry the famous family tradition, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Your mom exactly. never got to do and your grandfather. Yeah. Right? And so I'm saying, you know, like when I'm going to go, you know, to grad school, you can apply for their bachelor's because here, you know, people like this sort of thing, you know, like the family members going to the yeah, same school. That's true. So yeah. maybe it will help. Yep. My mom went here too. Oh, it's so. cool. Yep. Uh, okay, so what are your plans after graduating from UNCG? So I, I hope to go to a grad school. Okay. Because, um, well, your education in archaeology is not really finished or considered finished mm -hmm. with bachelors. Sure. So um, I already made like a spreadsheet of grad schools. All right. Uh, well, started at least doing that. You thinking in the U.S.? So, yeah. Okay. Um, also thinking maybe Europe, like okay. um, England, but that's it's kind of different. In because in my um, in my field, I can only well at least for now. Maybe I'm just you know searching it completely wrong. Um, I'm finding master's degrees for like one year, mm -hmm. and then you're done. And I'm like, is it different? I don't know. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, I, I always thought that, you know, master's is for two years. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're just doing everything, you know, faster. And, you know, it's more um, kind of um, focus mm -hmm. uh, or less time off. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we have programs where you can do an accelerated master's and you do your bachelor's mm. and then you, you sort of combine some of those classes and then you, oh. you, you can skip ahead. Basically, it's kind of like what you did when you were yeah. younger and skip ahead and get your master's. But mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what these are. Maybe. Yeah. And what area do you, you have an open mind about what kind of archaeology you might want to do? Uh, I have two options. Um, at first, I wanted to do forensic anthropology. So, basically, working with modern human remains mm -hmm. um, that, you know, were discovered on a crime scene. Mm -hmm. And um, as they are already decomposed, they're only bones, so you invite anthropologists to study them. Um, however, everybody is saying that there's not enough jobs in that, and there's one forensic anthropologist per state. Yeah. And it's going to be really hard. Right. I mean, I guess, you know, like the private um, option is, you know, private practice um, you know, is an option, but I am not sure if I can handle that. <laughs> right. That would be tough, uh -huh. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so another option is bioarchaeology. Mm -hmm. It's similar stuff, but with ancient people, mm -hmm. you know. So, and there are more of those okay. than modern people. All right. So, yeah. Good. It's good to have options. Yeah. Okay. So, you've been in the U.S. since before Trump's election in 2017. Right. And you knew this question was coming. Yeah. <laughs> uh, his connections to Russia have been announced, have aroused a lot of an, uh, interest in Russia on the part of most Americans. You know, we're curious. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to talk a little bit about U.S.-Russia relations and politics with you. Sure. And, of course, obviously, you're <laughs> it's kind of like you're, you're in the Russian club again. You're the representative, yeah. but we understand your views are not the views of every Russian. Mm -hmm. and there are, like good. us, there are difference, yeah. differences. So, but in general, uh, you know, just based on your experiences, uh, what was the response to Trump's election in Russia, and mm -hmm. was it any different than other presidents, uh, U.S. presidents like Obama or W. George W. Bush? Mm -hmm. um, well, um, I don't remember how, like, how people felt about Bush. The only thing I know about him is from the media. 
Mm -hmm. And most media coverage was basically focused on how kind of silly he is. Mm -hmm. Media know. coverage in Russia, you mean? This yes. Is, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's all that was um, accessible to me. Right. So, you know, kind of not entirely behaving like a president, not being exactly serious about it. So he was kind of like a joke. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what, you know, we thought. Um, with um, Obama, I, you know, I was already, you know, um, well, I guess not an adult, right. but I was more conscious of, yeah, that's natural you know, as you get yeah. a little bit older, you pay more attention to politics. When you're yes. a kid, you don't. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think it's definitely recognized that that was a big step, for sure. Um, and, you know, that he is probably, you know, a good president. I mean, of course, you know, like, racist people are racist in Russia, too. And they're going to say the same stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but the overall consensus was, yeah, it's, it's, it's great that they have... Obama is a president, but at the same time, he hates Russia. Mm. That was the perception? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, um, maybe he didn't, you know, actually hate Russia. Just He just probably said some, like, really strict things on TV about our government. Uh -huh. But when you say something like, Russia did blah, 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 right. blah, wrong, it's kind of like you're speaking about the whole country. Right. You know, and at, at least that's what people are getting. Sure. So, um, and I mean, it's, it, um, of course you understand that it's the government thing and they're just talking to each other. But are all people in America understanding that? You know, and you kind of get this whole like perception of, well, maybe all Americans now hate us. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, with Trump, it was a little bit different because, um, well, I was already grown up, that's for sure, and um, people, I guess, had sort of high hopes. I mean, the average Russian people. Of course, some, you know, thought of him as, you know, a buffoon, kind of. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, that's kind of how he presents himself sometimes. Others were really excited. Like, yeah, because he's talking to Putin. You know, mm -hmm. and he's saying good stuff about our president. Maybe our relationships, you know, will fix themselves. Right. Maybe it will be better. Um, and I think there, like I saw that, you know, around the internet that, you know, people even had, you know, like posters on their windows sometimes of Trump, you know, um, in Russia being kind of, you know, happy that, yeah, this is finally happening. Um, but then he became a president, and uh, nothing actually got better. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, uh, I, I think I heard that, you know, before he was elected, in newspapers we had articles like, Yay, Trump, he should be elected, he's the great guy, you know, he's gonna fix everything. And then after he got elected, the kind of the articles changed like huh maybe he's not our friend actually maybe <laughs> he's working for the other side so it's kind of like yeah so i don't i don't know exactly were people just disappointed that mm -hmm. nothing actually happened right away or is it just like seeking the enemy on the outside mm -hmm. yeah good yeah point. and yeah. which i mean I think America is doing the same thing right now uh, with the outside enemy, you know, with Russia mm -hmm. and Trump's election, because it's really easy to point fingers. Right. Like, it, you know, instead of accepting that, yeah, half of a country chose its president, we have to just accept that. Right. Yeah, that was going to be my next question is yeah. how do Rus Russians view the accusations of Russian involvement with the election? So. Yeah, and they still, like, they still can give it up. Maybe I'm biased, you know, but I need more evidence instead of just saying, yeah, Russians. 
Mm -hmm. um, recently, I got yeah. There's kind of an easy scapegoat, right, for the U.S. Yeah. So what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, and uh, recently I got an email from Tumblr, mm -hmm. you know, the social media website, saying, basically giving me the long list of um, accounts and names of people who are IRS spies. Mm -hmm. Apparently. They have been at first making some, you know, like really um, like posting um, important stuff, you know, or just funny stuff or silly stuff, and then the pro Trump propaganda. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like affecting the minds of people, mm -hmm. you know, just average users. And, f and to me, it was, you know, shocking. I don't know, like some people got a shorter list, I know for sure, mm -hmm. but I've been following, you know, lots of, you know, Russian artists that might have, you know, just reposted something because, you know, it just seemed, you know, silly, Right. like I like this meme or whatever. Yeah. Um, but then there was also no evidence, like, I mean, I do want to believe you know, Tumblr and their administration when they say that, but I also want some evidence because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just kind of like starting the whole, you know, scare thing. I don't yeah. want to call it the red scare, but you know, yeah. kind of, okay, sort of. Yeah. All right, I think you've talked about changes in Russian attitudes towards, the, towards Trump anyway. It yeah. Have attitudes changed towards the U.S. since Trump has been elected? Or mm. I mean, um, I don't know exactly how to explain. We don't, I guess we, so, okay, I'm only, uh, you know, up to date with what our media talks about sure. when I'm there, right. which happens rarely. Yeah, so you don't follow, the, I guess, the local Russian sources of news Yeah, the when news, you're not, there. not exactly. And if I am, they're mostly involved with what's happening, you know, back there. And Right. Um, not the Russian version of international news or whatever, not the... Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, we do talk a lot about, you know international stuff. Uh, for what reason? I don't know, because it seems like, you know, there are more important contemporary Russian issues that you can talk about, but um, yeah, it's, you know, this politician went somewhere and spoke some of the things. Um, this country is against Russia now. Mm. Cool. More sanctions. Right. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, let's talk about more Russian-centered mm -hmm. things. And Putin's just been reelected, right, yeah. to office for another six years. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know a great deal about how your mm -hmm. system works or anything like that. Um, you won over three-quarters of the vote, mm -hmm. right? Um, so how is he viewed in Russia? Is he a good leader? Um, well, the, the result of the elections, I think, was not a surprise to anyone. Right. Um, we all expected that. Um, I think he definitely was a good leader at some point. You know, I hear a lot of good stuff about him from adults, you know, from older people. My grandmother is pro-Putin like 100%. She uh -huh. just loves him. Um, so there must have been something that he really did well. It's just the matter of the longer a person sits on one place, the more like intoxicated um, they become with power. Right. So I don't even know. Like maybe it's just so far gone that he can't really change anything mm -hmm. by now. Do you know? Or. I mean, maybe there is no good alternative. Right. 
So what what needs to be changed? I mean, what are the some of the major issue major issues for Russia and the people? Hmm. I don't know. Another revolution? <laughs> Um, of course not. I, you know, that that would be bad. Um, uh, I don't know, because I want to say better candidates, but also we had some good candidates that were not, you know, getting access to the actual elections. Because um, my mom, you know, after elections, she called me and, you know, we talked about it. And she was like, well, you know, I think that people are just voting for Putin because there is no one better. Mm -hmm. But if you know about Navalny, he was one of the candidates that was supposed to run mm -hmm. for a president. And he is the, I think he's like the strongest member of the opposition. Okay. He, he was just not you know giving access for from you know for elections like he was banned completely so everyone knows that if he would run mm -hmm. would have this opportunity people would vote for him why wasn't he so he doesn't even get on the ballot i guess no. in, in the way we would say it so yeah. yeah no not at all and i mean he had a strong program a lot of young people, you know, my generation believe in him. Maybe they don't exactly agree with him 100%, but at least it's a change. So you think there's, a, is there a generational difference in Putin supporters and other people who might be, yeah, who might run for office or be leaders? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, it's hard to meet for me and you know, I think people my age to imagine um, present without Putin because mm -hmm. we basically, you know, grew up like my whole life almost. Putin was the president. Right. It's just how it is. Right. So it's like really hard to think. Okay, what would have been different? And is there a um, again? Don't know as much about the Russian political system. Is there a term limit? I know it's six to times every time he's elected is it like we you can't be president of the US more than twice yeah so there was an issue of that and I think they I, maybe I'm lying but I think they changed the Constitution a little bit so that you know Medvedev was the president after Putin for what four or six years mm -hmm. and then Putin became president again mm -hmm. so it's kind of like as long as you're not doing it not consecutive yes okay so, yeah. okay do I guess they, they don't have the older folks don't have an idea of much else other than Putin then because I mean you go much before you were born yeah. and you're in Soviet Union time so it's kind of a new era <laughs> mm -hmm. so they're still trying to work those things out I would think yeah and maybe it's also you know how there was this whole cult of Stalin mm -hmm. you know like the fact that there was just him like of course it was tyranny but at least it was also stability mm -hmm. so maybe that's kind of what appeals to people like they know what they got with Putin and yeah yeah uh, so you know at least it's something that doesn't change and change is always you know difficult and scary, scary. yeah um, yeah maybe I mean you know um, they're looking at you know America and thinking wow what a turmoil right. you know you have a new president every almost every four years that must be crazy mm -hmm. uh, when people complain about Trump here it's only four years <laughs> yeah it's not going to be that bad general you know generally in, in america the the incumbent president usually unless something really goes off the rails yeah. has a very good shot at going for another four years and they almost always run for four more years you know well so, still it's not yeah. it's not 20 right years, yeah that's a that's so. an important difference in perspective yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point so I wanted to ask you um, about Crimea. Uh, how do Russians? Mm -hmm. And this was 2014, I think, when yeah, when think Russia so. annexed Crimea. But uh, how do, how is that viewed by? I mean, it's such a this is a 
<laughs> you know, this is something that doesn't happen very often, right, in in the world today. Yeah. So, I'd so how do they view rare. it? Um. Well, people had different opinions on that. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Um. Because, well, first you have the you know the whole issue that, well, we gave it away mm -hmm. as a present, so. How about we take it back now? Right. And I mean, of course, you know, no take backs and all <laughs> that with presents. Um, but then, you know, some people stop at the thought that it was originally our land. They don't go further to see, well, who was the original owner of the land, which were, you know, the Crimean Kazakhs. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the indigenous people of the land with who we just, you know, took it from technically, you know, the empire. Um, so it's it's really difficult in terms of that. Are we actually taking back what's ours? Or was it never ours from, you know, the beginning? Mm -hmm. And there were also, you know, like news covering that our government is now giving, you know, the land back. Not like um, giving it away, but providing access for the land to Crimean Kazakhs. But apparently that only lasted for so long, you know. Uh, yeah. So, and um, not really happening anymore. Um, but I don't know exactly what's happening there. Um, another thing is that uh, people voted, mm -hmm. right? Um, of course, it was the voting of people who had not, you know, who hadn't the government at the point, uh, you know. Um, so they were in an unstable situation without a government, without any direction. So, of course, they will vote to be, you know, as a part of Russia. Mm -hmm. They're really close to Russia. Right. And with Ukraine, it was always kind of like you have the eastern side that is more Russia, I guess, and the western side that is more Europe. Right. So our relationships with eastern Ukraine are so much better. So, you know, of course people were feeling like maybe it's protection, maybe it's going to be better, maybe their economy is going to be better. So, of course, they voted. Was it pressure? Mm -hmm. Or was it their actual, you know, uh, decision? It's kind of hard to tell. But, um, so, you know, I mean, I can definitely say that people were polarized. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still remember, you know, my mom being enthusiastic about it and me being like, mm, let's not <laughs> yeah. go there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a complicated issue, that's oh, for yeah, sure. Definitely. Okay, well, we're coming to the end of the interview. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you to tell me how UNCG has affected your life and what it means to you. Um, <laughs> well, I, hmm, I think what it definitely gave me is a clearer future. I mean, you know, I still sometimes find myself in a situation like, okay, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> but at least there is this that I that I'm gonna graduate mm -hmm. that I have classes so it's it's structure and support and the people here you know they you know welcomed me with you know open arms and um, even though my accent is funny <laughs> um, you know still it's you know um, it gave me purpose in a sense you know that for these three four years you have something what to do and we're going to support you and perhaps you even become successful you know um, with our help so I think you know for me it's great mm -hmm. okay well, I don't have any more formal questions for you uh, okay. is there anything else that you'd like to add to the interview is there anything that we talked about or didn't talk about that you want? Um, no, I think we talked, uh, you know, about a lot of stuff. It was like, you know, the full spectrum. Covered it all, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking with us today. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. Thank you for having me. Thanks.